Good evening, everyone. So glad you could join us this evening for our virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We begin, or we actually, before the actual start time at 7 p.m., we give ourselves the gift of a 10-minute meditation. So I'm glad you are able to join us for that. So I'm going to invite you to just get still wherever you are seated right now. Close your eyes. And just make sure you're seated in a way that is comfortable, but that you're not going to have a tendency to nod off. Just making sure the spine is erect. And let's take a nice deep breath in. And as we release that breath, let's just release all our thoughts about the day, what has led up to this moment. And with another nice deep in breath. And as we release that, just allowing our bodies to relax and release our thoughts about what is yet to come. Allowing ourselves to bring our awareness into this now moment. And a wonderful tool for staying in the now moment is to just focus on the breath. Noticing the in-breath and the out-breath. You may want to notice the sensation as the breath comes in through your nostrils versus when you release it. Or feel the rise and the fall of the belly. Just find a focal point. And then you may want to silently repeat to yourself, breathing in with the in-breath breathing out with the out-breath. And the mind has a tendency to just wander off, to get involved in thoughts, notice sounds, notice sensations in the body. If that happens, this is a time to exercise great compassion. Just call forth a witness that just notices where the mind has gone. Maybe label it as thinking, hearing, feeling. And then gently, compassionately bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
so gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings. Notice the weight of your body on whatever you are seated on right now. Maybe wiggle your toes and fingers and just as you feel ready, open your eyes. So once again, welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. If any of you joined us uh, since we began the meditation, we're so glad you're with us, either on Zoom or Facebook Live. Let's begin our service with our opening chant, God is in this place, led by our wonderful Dean Regan and Sam Krieger. <laughs> So please join me in prayer. So let us bring our awareness inward once again to that sanctuary that lies within each and every one of us, to that place where we can sense beyond our physical sensations of a me, a you, a him, her, a this and that, a here and there, to that intuitive place that can feel a connection with the one life, the one power, the one absolute, invisible, infinite vibration of love, joy, abundance, creativity, wholeness, every form of good, that that one life of God truly is the life out of which everything comes into being and it lives in through and as each and every one of us. Everything in creation is imbued with the nature of God. And so I absolutely know that God is present right here, right now, as we have just chanted, God is in this place. And I know we feel that vibration of God's love in which we are all interconnected. We feel that vibration of love that inspires each person who's of service this evening. We are uplifted and inspired by God moving and flowing through our music ministry through Sam and Dean this evening. I open myself to being a vessel through which the message that needs to be spoken this evening is spoken that all of us are blessed by every part of the service, that our consciousness is raised up, and that we step into a greater awareness of our oneness with the divine and get to experience it more fully as a result of this time together. And so I give thanks right here, right now, for the blessings that I know we all receive through this service. And in gratitude, 
I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory, the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet. The storm clouds gather over liberty. Let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be Thank you, Dean. <laughs> hmm. 
need to come back into my body. <laughs> so, God bless America. How perfect on this day for us to be hearing that. You know, I, Dean had told me he was going to be singing this song this evening. And as I was thinking about it and my talk, which is lost in translation, I remember the first time I heard, as a young child, I heard God Bless America. And one of my first thoughts as I went to my mom and asked was, why only America? Doesn't God bless everyone? And my mom explained, well, of course, God has no favorites. But this is a song about love and appreciation for what we have in America. And I remember her saying to me, hopefully, you know, what we can hope for everyone is that everyone in the world may be able to feel that way about their country and where they live, and that they have appreciation for all the blessings that they have. But we should show our appreciation for the blessings that we have. I think that offered me a very high-minded, very inclusive translation of those lyrics. In other words, interpretation, as I'm looking at this idea of lost in translation. Now, in Science of Mind, we would also look at the lyrics. I think in some ways when people say, God bless America, it's like we're asking God to please bestow blessings on America. And I think we all know, hopefully, we understand this teaching that God does not have any favorites. God is always bestowing its blessings upon all of us, that we are filled and surrounded by God's nature. And unconditional love, which is the nature of God, doesn't withhold any good from anything or anyone. It's really, it's up to us in our spiritual journey to awaken to that awareness of God's blessings and to open to them, to accept them, to call them forth into our lives. So as metaphysicians, I think we can look at this as this song as a way of opening our hearts and minds to that power that lies within us, but that's ever greater than us, and to show our appreciation for the good that we have, but to say, keep bringing it on. I'm open to it. So as far as lost in translation, I offered a couple of translations or interpretations of those lyrics. Looking at our own consciousness, we need to realize that we're always translating life experiences and situations. You know, there's this little inner translator that's witnessing and then interpreting what's going on as life unfolds for us. And being aware of that, I think it might be helpful for us to regularly question whether or not our translations are serving us, whether or not our perceptions, our interpretations of things are really serving us to experience good in our lives. So now that I've spoken a bit about America, as I mentioned last week, you know, there are two predominant themes, I'm teased about this all the time, that come up in my talks. One is either my experiences in corporate America or my experiences in France. And so I'm going to invite you to join me in my little memory box here and take a journey to another country that I love very much, to France. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> ah, yes, let's have la vie en rose. <laughs> so I'm inviting you to come with me back to the 1980s in France, specifically to Paris where Parisians had, at some point along the way in the 80s, I'm pretty sure it was in the mid-80s, uh, that they had become aware that a lot of foreigners were saying that Parisians are not very friendly and accommodating to tourists. 
Well, you know, that raised the reaction of sacré bleu, what? <laughs> and so the mayor of Paris at that time decided, well, we can't have this. We want people to feel welcome in our city. So they began this program where they encouraged people, if, uh, if Parisians, if they spoke a foreign language, to wear a little badge that said Bienvenue Metro, when they were in the metro, Bienvenue being welcome. And in the uh, middle of it, it said, you know, I speak English or, you know, I, I don't know how to say, I speak German or whatever, but they were to uh, say what language they spoke. And so my aunt at the time, my dad's sister, was studying English and she had gotten to the point that she could hold basic conversations and so she thought, I, I should be wearing a badge. I want to make people feel welcome in my city. And so she wore a badge saying, I speak English. She was wearing her badge in the metro one day when an Englishman approached her. And he asked her, excuse me, madame, but where is the river? The river. Now, of course, he was referring to the Seine. So let me explain. In French, we have the word rivière. that's very close to river. Technically, it refers to a river that empties into another river. But you know, more generally, it's a river that you know, can navigate with maybe a tiny little boat or a canoe. Whereas a body of water like the Seine or the Loire, which are large bodies of water. Uh, the Seine, I think, is approximately 480 miles long, and boats can navigate along the Seine. Uh, that is referred to as a fleuve, okay? You're getting a French lesson here. So my aunt hears river, and in her mind, she translate that, translates that to rivière. And so she's thinking about a tiny little river running through Paris, and she responds to the gentleman, uh, sorry, monsieur, there is no river in Paris. <laughs> to which the Englishman goes, no river. <laughs> and my aunt keeps thinking, she goes, no, monsieur, there is no river in Paris. At which point, he apparently got this very indignant look on his face, probably thinking, see, it's true what they say. This woman is intentionally trying to mess me up. And he goes storming off. And so my aunt then started, you know, continued on her journey, confused why he seemed so upset, when all of a sudden it dawned on her that he's referring to the sin. And she starts screaming. And, turning back and trying to find him, and she's running through the corridors of the metro going, Monsieur, Monsieur, la Seine, la Seine, there is a river, there is a river. She never found him. <laughs> One simple word translated incorrectly left one man thinking that, again, that stereotype of the French not being helpful was true. I don't even want to think about how people translated the experience of seeing my aunt, who's really a very sane woman, running through the halls going, there is a river, there is a river. But needless to say, I, but they had their interpretations about what that was about that had nothing to do, no basis in reality. Time and again, in Science of Mind, we keep reiterating how our perceptions the way we see things, the way we interpret things, the way we translate things impacts our life experiences. And, you know, it's next to impossible for us to even know all the human facts about a situation. And so we really emphasize in this teaching being aware of our thoughts, being aware of our beliefs, our perceptions, and seeing whether or not they are calling forth greater good into our lives, or if they're inhibiting 
the flow of love and joy and abundance and wholeness and all these aspects of God's nature that are always there at the center of being available for us to experience. Change your thinking, change your life, which is something you will hear a lot in our teaching, is based on the idea that we should be open to recognizing where our thoughts are limited or flawed and changing them to experience some greater good. I think we would really be well served to remember that whatever thoughts, feelings, opinions that we have about anything, especially when they are negative, when they are causing us to feel anger, hate, sadness, grief, whatever, is to consider there might be other points of view to consider. Maybe, just maybe, that look from that person that we saw had absolutely nothing to do with us. But our little translator say, oh, see, they don't like you because blah, blah, blah. Maybe, just maybe, we're projecting something onto that email or that text that's completely contrary to what the person was intending to communicate. We're reading it and translating it and putting some meaning to it that really was not the person's intention. Maybe our per opinion of that person over there for whom we have such contempt would change if we knew where they were coming from. How often have we gained some fact that we didn't know before that suddenly caused us to see things in a different light? It's really important for us to be willing to examine our translations and how accurate they are as we go through life. Anytime we have a negative response to something or someone, I think we have to realize that's our response. We are interpreting, we're translating something to cause us to have a negative feeling about it. We've offered a translation to that situation that produces that response. Now, it doesn't mean that the facts of the situation are necessarily different, but you know how sometimes you'll witness something that you might recognize as, gee, that wasn't appropriate, or that person could have done better, but somehow it doesn't upset you, because that day you didn't add the translation of, and because of that, I cannot be happy, it's my business to make sure they change, my security feels threatened, you didn't add any of those translations of the situation. You were able to see that that's what's going on, except that, well, maybe they're having a bad day or whatever, and move on. You know, we constantly want to look at what we're saying to ourselves and whether or not it's serving us, as I said earlier. And recognizing that we never know all the facts of a situation can help us to stay open to reinterpreting them in a more compassionate, more enlightened way. But ultimately, I would say, even beyond the fact that we don't always know all the human facts, and if we gain more facts about the situation, it might help us understand it better and open our hearts a little bit more. The bottom line is, the biggest error that we tend to make in our translation of life is to translate or interpret things in a way that denies God's presence in that situation, in that moment, in ourselves, in that other person. God is in everything and everyone. We keep reminding ourselves of that over and over and over again in this teaching. God is in everything, in every moment, in everyone. So whenever we're condemning ourselves or others, we're denying the truth of that greater potential of God 
that's in us, that's in them, that's in situations, that even if right now they're not looking good, that there is that greater potential of good to be revealed. We're translating that unkind act into that person is unkind. The act might have been unkind, but we're putting the spin on that act defining that person. We're forgetting a greater potential of God's presence in that person that can be called forth, that can be revealed. We're looking at a negative situation, a negative condition, and inwardly adding the translation that denies that there's a greater potential of God's goodness to be revealed. That doesn't serve us in experiencing more of God's nature or calling forth more of God's nature into the world. So I think we all know today was a really big, important day in our country. And certainly the theme of unity was a major theme in President Biden's inaugural speech today about healing the dividedness that many have been experiencing in this country. And I think we certainly can admit there's been a lot of that happening. I think it's really important for us to remember that unity, that unity that we want to call forth is actually an aspect of God's nature that lies in all of us. You know, we're all united, whether we want to believe it or whether it's hard to accept or not. The truth is, truth with a capital T, the absolute truth is that we are all interconnected in this one life of God. On a deep level, we all feel the impulse of God for connection. God seeks to have that exp the experience of interconnection with itself in all parts of itself. So we all feel that impulse. That idea of let's have unity isn't just you know, one party or you know, one president trying to call that forth. In the depths of our soul, all of us are calling for that. But see, we're adding translations to that. So we feel the impulse for connection and unity but we add to it things like, yeah, I want to feel unity with people who think like me, act like me, agree with me, show up in this way. Those are beliefs, perceptions, translations that we add to a core impulse of God's love for us to all feel united and interconnected. And in our translation of what we need to feel, you know, in or for connection with others, you know, what we need them to be like, what we need to change out there for us to feel unity, we've lost in our translation the sense of we're already interconnected. We all share the same core impulse of God to experience good. We just need to all expand our idea of what good is. That real goodness is a goodness that's for everyone and withholds nothing from anyone. As I was exploring that idea, some lyrics from our beloved soloist Tina Meeks, a song that she wrote years ago, We Have a Dream came forth where she said, everyone has got their own opinion on how to rearrange the other woman or man. But if we'd see the things we have in common, perhaps we'd drop our fists and lend a hand. So I say, in keeping with this powerful, wonderful theme of unity and calling, for unity, I invite us to contribute to that. You know, we heard today, it's not one man isn't going to be able to bring unity 
we were called to, come on, let's all come together. This is how we're going to make this happen. And you know what, folks? It's not about waiting for anyone else to start. We get to start right where we are and be the change that we want to see. So here's what I would offer is to, in, you know, to contribute to this healing. When we find ourselves having a negative knee-jerk reaction to anyone or to groups of people whose ways or views we find to be very objectionable, I invite us to pause, to remember our commonalities. Yes, there are many, 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 many things we have in common. We have God's core nature in us in common. To remember that, that is a greater truth about those people with whom we feel discord in this time. When we do that, we open the channels to heal discord, to call forth greater unity and harmony, and experience God's blessings that God is incessantly bestowing upon us, our loved ones, our nation, and the world at large. And so I'm going to invite you to join me in a little process I've abbreviated or shortened it, but for you to get an idea of how we can do this. So I invite you to just get still, turn your attention inward, and call forth an individual, or it could be a group of individuals with whom you feel discord. And as you have that person or those beings in mind, just silently repeat to yourself, just like me, this person or these people is seeking or seeking some happiness for his, her, or their lives. Just like me. This person and these people are seeking some happiness for his, her, their lives. Just like me, this person is or these people are trying to avoid suffering. Just like me, this person or these people have known sadness, loneliness, and despair. Just like me, this person and these people are seeking to fulfill his, her, their needs. And just like me, this person or these people are learning about life. May this person, these people, and I open to the ways to experience God's goodness, God's blessings that are available to us all without exception. And so from here, please join me in knowing the truth of that presence of God that lies at the center of all that is that lies in each and every one of us, every being everywhere. And knowing that God's nature fills all creation, that every attribute of God lies at the center of every part of creation. Let us absolutely know that where there may be a sense of unsettledness or pain around facing the changes in life. Wherever that may be happening, we can join in knowing the truth that God's nature is unchangeable, immutable. It is eternal. We always remain interconnected in it in this life and beyond. And that we are always able to call it forth and experience it in a new way. Where there is any challenge around health and wholeness. Let us know the truth of the vibration of health and wholeness that is God's nature 
in every being, in every situation, revealing the pathways into greater health and wholeness, the cures, the way to step forward and experience that well-being in ever greater dimensions. For those who may be feeling unfulfilled, let us know that that creative nature of God is always there to give of itself unto itself uniquely and creatively through each of us. And as we know that truth, those who may be experiencing this sense of unfulfillment or not being in their right place are guided to the perfect right places to share their unique talents and gifts and be absolutely valued and appreciated for them. Where there's any experience of lack going on, let us know the truth of God's abundance that we're dealing with the infinite that is always there, giving and taking in of itself through us. And as we know this truth for all beings everywhere, there's an expansion in consciousness that allows for a greater outflow and inflow of love and abundance and all needs met. And let us absolutely know for those who are feeling disconnected from love in any way that the core nature of love is always there at the center of each of us leading to a greater self-love, love of others, love of life itself. And knowing that that nature of love is always for some greater good to be revealed, let us set our own intentions for greater good in silence. So whatever these intentions may be, let us know that we're feeling the vibration of God's love, God's goodness for greater revelation of itself. And as we know that this impulse is coming from God and that God is there, God's nature is revealed, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. We bless our country. We bless all nations. We bless all beings around the world, knowing we all feel the impulse of God for more of itself to be known and realized. And in gratitude for knowing this truth, I release this word into the law of mind, knowing it is done, it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. So this is a time in our service for affirmative giving. And uh, just in advance, thank you for continuing to contribute to our community. Uh, you should be seeing a link popping up that uh, you can uh, go to. If you don't see it, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give that takes you straight to our donation page to make a donation online. 
Um, you can also text your donation by texting the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And uh, you can also call in after service. Uh, we'll be here for about 30 minutes after service to take your donations by credit card or debit card over the phone. And of course, thank you also to those of you who prefer to mail in your checks. However they're coming in, we just so appreciate your donations. So with that, let's join in this energy of love as we hold our intentions in our hearts, put our hands to our hearts and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest. So as we wrap up our service, I um, wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been of service this evening. Uh, let me start out there in um, virtual land to, <laughs> had a moment, I had to translate. <laughs> so to Gail Pallott and Liz Racy for holding vigil for us this evening. Thank you to both of you. To our Zoom hosts, uh, Lynn Romanowski, Alma Alvarez, and Ray Regan, thank you for your support on Zoom. And to Melissa Allen, thank you so much for supporting us on Facebook Live. Here in the sanctuary, <coughs> I need to clear my throat. Adam in the back there, thank you for making sure we are seen and heard up here. Yes. To Doreen and Blair, who are here running technical aspects, to Brenda, who's running the camera over here, and Nikki, who's cross-training, to Dean and Sam, thank you, thank you, thank you for the awesome musical support. And Dean, for your music, people should go to your website, deanregan.com. They should. Uh, they sh you should. You should go to Dean's website. <laughs> and of course, thank you to all of you for joining us this evening. Um, so a couple of announcements. Again, a reminder that you can make your donations over the phone for about 30 minutes after service, 818-762-7566, or online, nhcrs.org forward slash give, or you can text to give to 818-457-3419. Prayer with a practitioner is available after the service on Zoom. So you can just, if you're not on Zoom right now, join us on Zoom and tell the Zoom host that you would like to be connected in a private breakout room with a practitioner. You can email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or call it in to the church office, leave a voicemail that you select option four on the phone menu and 
um, that will allow you to leave a voicemail with your prayer request. We check all of those, uh, the voicemail and emails every evening. So, and then we send them out to our practitioners. So you will be well supported. Uh, let's see, announcements next Wednesday evening. Same time, same place, meditation 650, service at seven, and my topic will be do no harm. Living a Course in Miracles via Zoom, we invite you to join this group led by our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, that'll be meeting tomorrow, Thursday evening, from 7.15 to 9.15, and all are welcome. Our Journey of the Heart campaign, we're just really excited that this is still going on. Thank you to all of you who continue to send in your pledges. Um, the pledge form is on our website, and just thank you for helping us to make 2021 the best year ever. And uh, just a reminder that this coming Sunday, our grief support group will be meeting on Zoom. This group is facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, um, so they'll be meeting on Zoom at 1 p.m., and all are welcome. And with that theme of grief support, um, I do want to just request that our community hold the uh, whole family and loved ones of our beloved practitioner, Scott Vance. Uh, in prayer, Scott made his transition on Sunday. Uh, it was a shock to many of us. We're all processing that. So let us please join in consciousness and just knowing that he has moved into that greater dimension of life and love and surround his family and friends with our love and prayers. Uh, just want to remind you that to stay connected with your community, you can continue to join us before and after our services, uh, the Zoom patio. Our men's group will be meeting on Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. every Sunday, and our Zoom meditation continues to meet every Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15. So thank you, thank you once again for joining us. For any of these other things that you might want to join, you just go to our website, nhcrs.org. We so appreciate it. you were with us this evening. Let's close the service with our final song. <laughs> Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say, oh,